Hello and welcome to this video on Neuroleptic Malignant Syndrome. In this video, we'll start with the case, we'll move on to the presentation of Neuroleptic Malignant Syndrome, some basic, some basic pathogenesis of why things might be occurring and the relative theories that have been associated with a Neuroleptic Malignant Syndrome for explanation of all of these presentations. And then we'll move on to the treatment and then from the treatment after that I'll summarize all of these things in my slides. So let us start without any delay. So a 45 year old female patient comes into your ER with a temperature of 105 degree Fahrenheit. Let me clear all the pen markings. Okay, so with a temperature of 105 degree Fahrenheit, a BP of 190 by 100, which tells us that she's hypertensive, she's hyperthermic pulse of 130 which is greater so tachycardic she also seems to be confused which says altered mental status and positive for rigidity in the limbs okay she was recently diagnosed with schizophrenia that becomes important to us and has a history of suicide attempts so i have had a lot of pointers i made a lot of pointers in this case which all point toward neuroleptic malignant syndrome but in the end i said she was recently started on haloperidol and sertraline so i gave both of these drugs to have a sort of to give a few differentials in your mind that might come in and we'll talk about these so What's the presentation of neuroleptic malignant syndrome? And let's see if all of these match with our case or not. Hyperthermia. Was that lady hyperthermic? Yes, she had a temperature of 105 degree Fahrenheit. And here we can say the temperature is greater than 99.5 uh, qualify as hyperthermic. So yes, she was hyperthermic. Hypertension. BP greater than 120 by 80. She had 190 by 100. Tachycardia, heart rate of 60 to 100. Above that is tachycardia. She had a heart rate of 130, I think. Altered mental status, she had confusion. And lead pipe rigidity. All of these, all of these findings are pathognomonic for neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Sorry. So did did our patient have all of these findings? Yes, so we are thinking in terms of neuroleptic malignant syndrome. What is neuroleptic malignant syndrome? Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is a life-threatening adverse reactions to antipsychotics or anti basically anti-dopaminergic drugs because antipsychotics are one of the most commonly used anti-dopaminergic drugs, but there are other anti-dopaminergic drugs as well such as uh, uh, domperidone uh, or metaclopramide so these are antidopaminergic drugs and this is a life-threatening adverse reaction to these antidopaminergic drugs onset is around one to three days after starting or uh, taking a bigger dose of these drugs lab findings include increased creatine kinase. Why would there be increased creatine kinase? I talk about this in a lot of detail in my video on malignant hyperthermia. So check that out as well because that might be a differential. And I'll talk about this in, uh, that in this video as well. So increased creatine kinase because of muscle rigidity, muscle increase, uh, sustained muscular contraction that is leading to damage to these myocytes. The damage to these myocytes causes the release of creatine kinase, which is a very, very abundant enzymes in this myocyte, in the myocytes. So damage to the muscles, sustained contraction of the muscles causes the release of the bursting and release of creatine kinase into the, uh, into the serum, into the blood. So what's the pathogenesis of neuroleptic malignant syndrome? Due to the antagonism of central dopaminergic receptors, central by central we mean the brain. So dopaminergic receptors in the brain, when they become antagonized, that might be linked to the formation of neuroleptic malignant syndrome, especially the parts of hypothalamus that control temperature, because there's hyperthermia in neuroleptic malignant syndrome and autonomic uh, nervous system. So basically, what does autonomic nervous system do? There are two parts to it. There's the PSNS, which is the parasympathetic nervous system and the 
sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system sympathizes with your troubles, right? The sympathetic sim nervous system sympathizes with your troubles, meaning whenever you get in trouble, whenever you get in a fight or flight situation, in a high stress situation, that's where the sympathetic nervous system comes in. It, it, it tries to get everything in your body to work in the favor of getting you out of that situation. So what are the actions of a uh, sympathetic nervous system? Because when you're exercising, you have a lot of heat in your body. You generate a lot of heat in your body. So the action of sympathetic nervous system is to, is to vasodilate all of the cutaneous nerve supply or all of the nerve supply on the skin that makes you look all red so you can radiate more heat. It, it, it takes the blood supply from your viscera, from the gut, which does not need the blood supply for now and gives it gives that very important blood supply to your muscles. What does the parasympathetic nervous system do? The parasympathetic nervous system serves to cool the body after you have exercised. So you have exercised, the sympathetic nervous system has been sympathizing with your exercising. You, don't, you didn't want to run, you're running. The sympathetic nervous system has been uh, very kind on you. It increased your body temperature, incre it increased your heart rate, it increased the activity of your body to help with this exercise. Now you've come back, you're sitting in your room, you're, taking a, you're sipping a glass of water. Now you want the parasympathetic nervous system to become active. So you want to stop all of this frenzy occurring in your body. That's where the parasympathetic nervous system becomes active. So what happens? So there's a sort of this balance that whenever, whichever situation is required. So normally the parasympathetic nervous system in normal situations, like I'm sitting right now, needs to be active. I need to be digesting. I need to be working. My uh, heart rate does not need to be high. And whenever I exercise, I want my sympathetic nervous system to be active. What hap what, what will occur? If there's an imbalance, if there's, if there's a, a dysautonomia, we call this, if there's an imbalance in the activity of the autonomic nervous system, you'll get all of these symptoms at rest. You might get symptoms of hyperthermia, you might get symptoms of tachycardia at rest. This is dysautonomia. So parts of the hypothalamus that control the autonomic nervous system in particular that control the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system what do antidopaminergic drugs do they mess up with those particular parts therefore you get dysautonomia therefore you get increased temperatures therefore you get tachycardia and increased basically increased pulse is tachycardia what what causes what causes the lead pipe rigidity that is seen I, I talked in the presentation about the lead pipe rigidity which is seen do you know about the nigrostriatal pathway let me let me help you recall the nigrostriatal pathway so in the basal ganglia what are the basal ganglia so the basal ganglia are the set of nuclei in the brain that help you in the initiation of movement sorry that help you in the initiation of movement the nigrostriatal pathway, which is particularly affected in Parkinson's, that is particularly affected in Parkinson's. This nigrostriatal pathway, how does it work? Dopamine helps you initiate a movement. Acetylcholine helps you inhibit the initiation of that movement. So what happens, I'll talk, I've talked about these in detail in on my videos on anti-Parkinson's medication, but I'll still talk about it a bit. What if I want to move my left hand? So I'm moving my left hand. I want to initiate the movement of this finger and I want to inhibit the movement of all of the other fingers. This is where the basal ganglia comes in and this is where dopamine comes in. The dopamine is integral to the function of basal ganglia and very importantly, the nigrostriatal pathway, which helps you in the initiation of movement. Therefore, this particular pathway is affected due to the deficiency of dopamine due to the deficiency of dopamine in Parkinson's disease, you see rigidity, you see bradykinesia. What is bradykinesia? Brady means less, kinesia means movement, less movement, rigidity seen in Parkinson's. The exact same thing happens here. There's a disruption of the nigrostriatal pathway in the basal ganglia. What will that lead to? Rigidity, the same kind of lead pipe rigidity which is seen in Parkinson's cases. It makes sense. What's the treatment for this? 
stop antipsychotics obviously you need to stop the antipsychotics they're messing up with your hypothalamus they're messing up with the nigrostriatal pathway in your basal ganglia give dopamine agents this is occurring what what happens in do- what happens in parkinsons you have less dopamine or dopamine is not reaching or dopamine is not basically going to the nigrostriatal pathway so therefore all of the drugs what is what is the main drug that you give in parkinsons levodopa dopamine you give dopamine agents in neuroleptic malignant syndrome as well to to aid in the uh, to the deficiency or the deficit that has been created by the antagonizing of those receptors those dopamine receptors you want to give more dopamine to act against that so do you give dopamine agents supportive care the patient is hypertensive the patient might be uh, the patient might have nausea vomiting or stuff like that you need to care for that tantraline i talked about tantraline in a lot of detail on my video on malignant hyperthermia so i'll just i'll just explain it just a little bit in this one as well so if this is an example of the sarcoplasmic reticulum in your myocyte and let's call this let's call this the myocyte okay if this is an example of the sarcoplasmic reticulum in your myocyte and i've shaped this and i've shaped this like a bottle for you to know this bottle contains calcium this bottle contains calcium so this bottle and there is this sustained contraction there is this rigidity in your muscle that means excess calcium is being released out here you want to plug this bottle up you want to plug the bottle's cap what is the bottle's cap in sarcoplasmic reticulum sarcoplasmic reticulum in uh, skeletal muscle this is the rhyanodine receptor this is the rhyanodine receptor so what does tantraline do it inhibits this receptor it inhibits the cap it stops it stops the bottle from coming out let's draw it again this the bottle the calcium which is coming out of the rhyanodine receptor let me change the color now okay so this action this action is of tantraline it inhibits that rhyanodine receptor it inhibits the release of excess calcium in to your sarcoplasm stop the excess release of sar- uh, calcium stop the muscular contraction help the muscles relax help the rigidity that's the treatment so let us talk about the differentials of neuroleptic malignant syndrome in the case if you remember the patient was started on two drugs haloperidol and sertraline what is sertraline sertraline is an ssri it's a serotonin selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor it prevents the reuptake of serotonin from the synaptic cleft from the synapse you have increased ter- serotonin in that particular space that might lead to serotonin syndrome haloperidol might lead to neuroleptic malignant syndrome how do you differentiate between the two and what are the common symptoms between the two nms and serotonin syndrome the onset of neuroleptic malignant syndrome is about 1 to 3 days that of serotonin is less than 1 day it occur it might occur in the matter of hours due to uh, either an overdose of an ssri overdose of a drug that causes an increased level of serotonin or or an interaction more commonly an interaction between two drugs that both increase the level of serotonin in your body leading to serotonin syndrome both have altered mental status both have dysautonomia nms has lead pipe rigidity why sustained contraction of those muscle messing up of the nigrostriatal pathway in the brain we talked about that you know that clonus in serotonin syndrome what is clonus clonus is a rhythmic oscillating movement of your peripheral limbs especially when uh, especially on the inst- on the on initiating of a stretch reflex so if if you if you dorsiflex the patient's foot if you dorsiflex the patient's foot if let's assume this is my foot and you dorsiflex towards the patient's face if you dorsiflex and there's dorsiflex and there's plantar flexion plantar flexion is towards the ground 
if you dorsiflex the patient's foot towards the extreme and then you let it go there's this rhythmic oscillating movement usually accompanied with hyper reflexia because we initiated a stretch reflex and now we have this rhythmic oscillating movement this is an example of clonus so there's hyporeflexia obviously because there's rigidity there's lead pipe rigidity if you think of a lead pipe there's a rigidity like that in the muscles in neuroleptic malignant syndrome and then in serotonin syndrome there's a hyperreflexia let's summarize this before that how do you differentiate between malignant hyperthermia and neuroleptic malignant syndrome or serotonin syndrome the most important thing the only thing that i need you to remember is the onset of these malignant hyperthermia usually occurs the causative agent is usually inhaled anesthetics or local anesthetics like succinyl codeine and that's about it the summary antipsychotics antidopaminergic drugs lead to a life threatening condition known as nms neuroleptic malignant syndrome characterized by hyperthermia hypertension tachycardia dysautonomia altered mental status lead pipe rigidity treatment is dantrolene cap the bottle don't let ryanodine release that much calcium cap the bottle same as in malignant hyperthermia watch that video differ from serotonin syndrome how hyperreflexia in serotonin hyporeflexia in neuroleptic malignant malignant hyperthermia the onset the causative agent is usually different thank you so much for watching this video if you want me to make another video on any other topic write in the comments and subscribe to my channel for more of these videos in the recent future thank you